Hare Krishna. Question. Oh, uh, in the Pramasadeva Chitta Prabhu, in the Mahabharat, it is said that Bhima vowed to drink the blood of Duryodhana, uh, of Dushyasana, and also that Draupadi wanted to bathe her hair with the blood of those who had insulted her. So this seems very gory. You know, uh, are devotees meant to be violent like this? Even if they are Kshatriyas, you know, they could just have vowed to kill. Why take such gory vows? which make them seem very bloodthirsty. Answer In the, in the Mahabharat uh, there is the Kshatriya ethos which is external and there is the Bhakti essence that is internal. So we need to see both and both are important at different levels. So, a Kshatriya uh, is a fighter and in fighting, one of the most uh, important strategies is intimidation. You know, and if an enemy is morale, if an enemy is shocked, enemy is disheartened, enemy is uh, scared, then it's relatively much easier to defeat that enemy. Now, it is said that a, a war is never lost till the war is lost in spirit. We never lose till we lose the will to fight or we lose hope. So usually warriors do uh, try to intimidate their opponents by creating, by using various strategies. So for example warriors may brag about their strengths, warriors may exhibit their weapons and exhibit their skills. So intimidation is a standard military strategy. So, uh, uh, so now when Bhima takes that vow that I will drink the blood of Dushyasana and I will uh, break the thigh of Duryodhana. Now all this is definitely at one level because Draupadi was so grievously dishonored because the Pandavas were so atrociously dispossessed and wronged. So, Definitely that was an outpouring of uh, unbearable, unstoppable anger that was there at that time. So now uh, this might uh, seem very, as, I said, as you said, it might seem very bloodthirsty that he took such a vow. But we see that Bhima also was ready to forego it all if a peaceful settlement was to take, uh, if an agreeable peaceful settlement was to take place. So it's not that his wow was driven, that his actions were driven only by anger and the drive for bloodthirsty revenge and nothing else. Although that was what prompted him to take uh, that fearsome wow, but he was ready to subordinate that to a higher principle if that was what was required. And that's why when Krishna went as Shanti Dut, Bhima also said that, Oh Krishna, strive earnestly for peace. And this statement was so surprising that Krishna teased Bhima. Oh, is it? I have heard that even fearsome warriors become fearful when war comes close. So have you also become fearful now? So Bhima, you know, Bhima just she rose up. You know, he said, I am not fearful, but I want to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. This is a very simple, in the Shanti Parva, the section comes, in, sorry, in the Udyoga Parva, which happens before the war starts, this uh, interaction comes up. The point is, Bhima was not simply a bloodthirsty warrior who was driven by nothing except revenge and bloodlust. Not at all. He, was, he had understanding of higher principles and based on understanding of higher principles, he was ready to uh, go ahead and do whatever it took. He was ready to do whatever it took uh, to even subordinate the uh, urge for revenge. Now, in the war that happened, there is no incident. Uh, actually, it is true that Bhima killed Duryodhana, killed Dushasana in a very brutal way. Brutal way means that Dushasana initially wounded Bhima and he started laughing. So they were fighting with bows and arrows and Dushasana bested Bhima. So Bhima got so angry that he just, uh, Bhima would normally fight with bow and arrow and he would get very angry, he would just take his mace and charge into the enemy camp. So he charged to Dushasana. 
hit him on the head. Uh, and while he was charging, Dushasa was shooting arrows, but Bhima was oblivious to all the arrows. He pounded him on the head, and he, the blow was so great that Dushasa was just thrown off the ground, thrown off the chariot onto the ground, and Bhima pounced on him, and then and then he ripped off his hand, and threw his hand away, and blood started gushing out from the open wound in his hand, and then it was the very hand which he had taken with which he had tried to disrobe Draupadi, with which he had dragged Draupadi's hair, he cut off that hand. And then at that time he took the blood in his hand and he uh, cupped the blood and then his whole face became covered with blood. And then he took a sword and just killed uh, and pierced it in Dushasana's heart and cut it and killed him. And then Bhima just got up and he said that this blood is sweeter than water, sweeter than my mother's milk and sweeter than heavenly nectar. And seeing Bhima in such fury with all his face covered with blood, the, the Kauravas were completely scared. In fact, so scared that it was at that time, Karana, when he saw Bhima in this mood, Karana dropped his bow in unconcealed horror. And they all thought that Duryodhana, that Bhima was like a Rakshasa, who a bloodthirsty Rakshasa who had drank blood. And I thought, how can we fight with such a Rakshasa? So Bhima essentially, what was he doing? He was definitely taking revenge, but along with that, he was using the strategy of intimidation. This was the practically the 17th day, and the war was coming to an end, and Bhima uh, wanted it to finish immediately. So he had the Kshatriya spirit of fighting. And later on, when Draupadi, when Gandhari asked him, how could you have drunk the blood of Dushyasana? So, how could you have done such a thing? So, Bhima told, I did not let the blood pass through my lips. So, he just just taken the blood up to his mouth and he had kept it aside. So, the point is that uh, the vow of taking, uh, the taking the, of saying that I will drink blood, that was an expression of anger. And that was also a strategy uh, and repeating that vow and appearing as if he had executed that vow was a strategy of intimidation. But uh, he was not just driven by a bloodthirsty uh, drive because he did subordinate himself. Uh, he, he was ready to give up even the vow of taking revenge if peace could be established amicably on mutually acceptable terms. And even when he was in that uh, fury of anger, he did not let blood actually pass through his lips. So, that means there was the principle of Kshatriya fury and Kshatriya honor and Kshatriya intimidation of opponent, that opponents that Bhima operated by. But at an inner level, he also had awareness of higher dharmic principles. And those higher dharmic principles, he did not violate. So, we should not think of Bhima as bloodthirsty. But we should see him as use as giving a vent to a natural human and Kshatriya anger at uh, at being subjected to atrocity and using the standard strategy of intimidation for scaring opponents. Now Draupadi also said that unless I bathe my hair with the blood of my opponents, I will not be peaceful. But there is no evidence in the Mahabharat that she actually bathed her blood with like that. Because the various Kshatriya opponents were killed at different times. Uh, different Kauravas died at different times. And um, some days the war went off, some days the war stopped. And those who had died, they were given honor, honorable cremations accordingly at various times. Uh, they were given honorable crem cremations at the, when the war got over. So, and even Draupadi went for those, Draupadi along with the ladies of both the Kurus and the Pandavas, went for that, went for those cremations. Of course, they did not join actually in the cremation, ladies were not supposed to go there. But they also grieved for it. So the point is, that although Draupadi took that vow, that is also, uh, that she never literally bathed her hair with the blood of her opponent. It was not that Bhima after he killed Duryodhana, he took the blood in his palms and went running right from the war field to the camps where Draupadi is and he offered the blood and they plowed the blood. Nothing like that happened. So the, again the point is 
these are the ways uh, these are uh, in nakshatriya culture these are the ways in which strong emotions are expressed and they are not to be taken literally but the emotions which are underlying them are to be understood so her fury at being dishonored in the public assembly is entirely understandable and it is this fury that we have to that she expressed through her anger now in today's culture also sometimes people may say that when people give get people say when i get angry when uh, if you make me further angry i will do this to you i'll do that to you now that is an expression of anger that is not something which is literally done uh, so similarly we see this as an expression of anger not as uh, as an expression of anger which was standard among kshatriyas at that time we should not take it as a expression of literal bloodthirst either in uh, bhima or duryodhana or uh, bhima or draupadi thank you hare krishna